Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got my uh, 22 Lowrider ST up on the lift today, and we are going to remove and reinstall the front wheel on this thing. Um, this is now this has inverted forks on it. Overall, this is pretty much the same as standard forks. Uh, it just looks a little different. It's actually pretty simple. Um, so, run through it, basic step by step. Let's jump in a little bit closer and get right to it. So, first thing I want to do is pick the motorcycle up. I have a motorcycle flat screw jack here. Um, you can pick these up at you know lo your local motorcycle supply place or Amazon or wherever online, wherever you want. But these are nice and stable. They have a nice flat surface on them. They fit across the frame rails here. And I just had my lovely wife hold the bike in place as I cranked it up with the scissor jack here and the ratchet. And once it was in place, I just tightened it down with the ratchet straps. Now I only picked it up just high enough that the wheel spins. We don't need to go any higher than that. Uh, just need to get enough to unload the front axle so we can take it out and pull the wheel out the front. First thing you're gonna wanna do is loosen up this pinch bolt on the front axle. <clears throat> That's gonna take a 5 16 Allen. And you just lefty loosey that sucker back a couple turns. You don't have to take it all the way out. You're just trying to relax this clamping force that is holding the front axle in. Then from there, you can take a 10 millimeter 12 point and you can remove the right side caliber. Now I did already break all these free, so they do appear to be spinning out super easy. I should be able to carefully slide this caliper right back off. You can lay it down gently and it'll be okay to just hang by the line, but be careful. Don't want to pull on it and damage the line or anything. Now after that's off, you can take the left side caliper off in the exact same procedure. Let me cut on that. Now we're over here on the left side of the bike. I already got the one bottom bolt out. I'll thread the top bolt out. Now you want to be careful as you slide this back because your wheel speed sensor right here, this is the cable for your wheel speed sensor. This is hooked on by some little clips up here uh, that hold on to the brake line. There you can see. And to get those little clips off, there's a little rubber clip and just pops off the brake line there. And you can either leave it hanging on the ABS line or the wheel speed sensor line, or let it fall to the table. Set those off to the side. Then when you slide your brake caliper out, you can carefully let that sit to the side. You want to be careful with your wheel speed sensor because it doesn't take a lot to damage this cable. And if you damage this cable, your ABS light come, will come on and you won't have any ABS. Now from here, we can pull the front axle out. All right, next step is going to be to pull the axle out of this thing. So this takes a three quarter inch Allen wrench. 
Odds are, most people don't own a three-quarter inch Allen wrench, myself included. But you know what is three-quarter? The hex end of the 5.8 spark plug socket. I learned this from Mike Sawyer at Cometic. Cometic gasket. So, you can take the little rubber grommet out that's in the middle there. Then you can take your 3 8 drive extension. And you can put it on the extension backwards. Then you can take your 3 8 ratchet. Put it on the end of the extension. You don't have to use one this long. I'm just trying to get my hands out of the way. And you can spin that axle right on out of there. And you can wrench this all the way back until it runs out of threads. And then you should be able to pull the axle on out of here. Keep in mind, whoops, keep in mind, on the left side of the motorcycle, there's a washer and a wheel speed sensor. On the right side of the motorcycle, there's a wheel bearing spacer there. So you're going to want to keep an eye on that, because when you pull it out, it's apt to want to fall down and hit the ground. Nobody wants that. So we're going to slide the axle out. There you can see it's got never seize all over it, which is good. So we're going to set that off to the side in a clean location. And we're going to carefully roll the wheel forward, watching our spacers and everything else that's in there. There's our left side space or our right side spacer. Then our wheel speed sensor came down. There's actually no washer on the left side. I was mistaken when I looked in there and saw the shoulder of the wheel speed sensor that I thought was a washer. So you only have the wheel speed sensor on the left and the axle spacer on the right. Now from there, you should be able to roll your wheel forward, take it on out of there. You're ready to send your wheel to the shop with a new tire and have a new tire mount and balanced on there. So to reinstall the wheel, I'm going to want to roll the wheel back in place here. Now, since the axle is going to go in from this side, first thing we're going to want to do is get our spacer in place. Make sure this is covered in never seize or at least some wheel bearing grease. Some general purpose grease from the... Uh, from AutoZone or somewhere. Uh, obviously, the never sees or the grease lubricates it, but it also keeps the water out and keeps it from rusting. So uh, it'll keep make the axle much easier to remove the next time. So first thing we're gonna do is slide the spacer in place back in here, and then we're gonna slide the axle in. We're just gonna slide this in a little bit, kind of jiggle the wheel around a little bit and slide it almost all the way into the other side. Now, we're going to take our wheel speed sensor here and slide it back in place in between the wheel and the front fork leg. This is going to be a tight fit. So you might have to jiggle it all around a little bit, but once you get that popped up into place, you should be able to slide the axle the rest of the way through. There, and slide the axle through. And we're going to kind of jiggle the wheel a little bit till it lines up and it starts threading in right there. Now, you want this to start in there by hand. You don't want to immediately jump right to the wrench or the impact, giving it ugga duggas or anything like that.
So now it seems to be biting in there a little bit. Take our three quarter inch drive Allen. And we're gonna run this all the way in there until it's snug. Now we're gonna give it a good once over. Make sure everything is still lined up. Make sure the wire for our wheel speed sensor is still in the proper location. Then we'll get out the torque wrench and torque it to spec. So first thing we're gonna do, is torque our axle to 75 foot pounds. Right there. Then, we're gonna to torque our pinch bolt right here to 21 to 25 foot pounds. If you don't have a ratchet and torque wrench, they're worth every penny. Click means it's tight. Now we can reinstall our brake calipers on each side. And when we do this, we're going to run these bolts in, each of them in by our fingers before we tighten either one of them up. So first thing you want to do, make sure your brake pads are pushed open so you got some thickness or you got a gap there for the rotor to go. Also, it's a good time to give yourself a little inspection there and see how much brake pad you have left. I'm at about 50%. And you always want to run them both even in evenly first before you tighten them down. Keeps things from cocking to the side. You're going to want to torque these bolts 28 to 38 foot-pounds. Now, take a little touch-up paint, touch up where I just scratched it. They can reinstall the caliper on the other side to the exact same procedure. Remember to give your brake lever a couple pumps to reseat your pads up against your rotor. Otherwise, you won't have brakes the first time you pull the brake lever. Take it off the lift, go take it for a ride. Remember, with brand new tires, you want to take it easy for the first handful of miles. They say 100 miles, but, you know, use your own judgment on that. Really, you're worried about the oil film that's still on the tire from when they took it out of the uh, mold when they made the thing. You want to scrub that off of it before you, uh, you know, really start tearing through turns. And I don't mean scrub it like a sponge. I just mean go out, take it for some easy rides. Put 50 miles on it, 100 miles, something like that, before you start hanging off the seat like a MotoGP rider. Other than that, you're good to go. That's all I got. Ride safe.